Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to be looking at the new iPhone XX and we're going to be comparing the camera on it to the X or the X. So, um, you know, here it is in the box. I'm not going to do the unboxing. There we go. Lightning fast <laughs> unboxing. Um, of course, I'd already opened it. It comes with the usual accessories that you would expect. The thing with the stickers in there. Um, headphones, you don't get the wireless headphones, unfortunately. These are the ones with the lightning on the end. And of course, no rapid charger still. So, a um, little cheap on that department. Uh, of course, this supports wireless charging, which I've never tried. If you have, let me know how it works. It just seems to me like it would probably take forever to charge. So anyway, looking at the phone really quickly, they look identical. But when you look at them, you don't see any difference between the 10 and the 10s or that would be the X or the XS. Of course, to me, the XS is really the max, the big one. So I used to have the 7 Plus, which was a big, huge phone. And then when the 10 came out with the same size screen and a smaller phone, I'm really happy. I prefer this. I can reach it with one hand almost. Fits on my devices and accessories and stuff like that a lot easier. Um, you know, maybe the Max might be good for drones because, you know, you've got an even bigger screen. But in my case, I'm happy with this size. So really there's two things in here that really matter. That's the camera. <laughs> that means a package is delivered. So there's two things in here that really matter to me. One of them is the camera and the other one is the audio. Obviously there's other things like better speed and all that, but I don't game a lot on here. So I don't really care so much about the speed. However, I do like the fact that the facial ID works really fast and opens it twice as fast as it did before. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the photos in the camera. I'm not even worried too much about video. I know it's got better stabilization, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I'll do that later. But right now I want to focus on the photographs because there's two things, smart HDR and this adjustable depth of field. They said on the thing it never been on a camera before, but that's not entirely true because the Lytro um, camera actually has been doing that for years it's with the depth of field. So let's start just by looking at some basic photographs from the 10 and the 10X. Okay, so let's quickly talk HDR. For those of you who know me, you know I've done entire courses on HDR for many years. Um, in fact, I was one of the first people doing HDR um, with photography. But anyway, um, HDR essentially is extending the dynamic range. You take a photograph here with a typical camera or a typical sensor, it can't see as much as the human eye as far as shadow detail and highlight detail at the same time. So if you expose for something that's bright, all the dark areas become black. And if you expose for something that is dark, all the highlight areas are blown out to pure white. So HDR is essentially taking multiple photographs and then merging them together to maintain highlight and shadow detail at the same time. Now the Smart HDR seems to do a really good job of it on the phone. You can go into settings, you can turn it off. And also under the camera settings, you can adjust it where you can keep the original photograph as well. So you don't have to, you know, if you don't like the HDR, you don't have to use it. So the next thing we're talking about, this depth of field, uh, this adjustable depth of field, it's more than just adding a background blur, which was what was used in portrait mode before. Of course, you have to go into portrait mode to do this. Um, but what it's doing is it's actually simulating bokeh, which is, um, you know, the way the lens interacts with 
areas of highlights. So rather than just being this blurred mess, it creates these nice little round balls, which look really nice. So it's doing that. So how does it actually do this? So what it's doing is it's using the two cameras uh, to create a 3D map. So what it's doing is it's analyzing it using AI and it's analyzing the person or the subject It's trying to recognize it and it's building a three-dimensional depth map. So what it can do is it uses that map later on um, kind of as a mask and then it, you can adjust the amount of depth of field just by adding that blur which is kind of similar to the camera lens blur inside of Photoshop. And in fact you could do the very same thing in Photoshop. But what you tend to do is you see a little bit of blurring around the edges when you turn the uh, depth of field too shallow, um, which is more blurred in the background. All right, let's have a look at the audio really quickly. Um, and this is important for people who are maybe um, using this as a video camera, you know, shooting, vlogging, whatever. Um, it's also nice, you know, if you're recording audio or just picking up sound bites. One of the things I love to do is take my phone out with me. In fact, I use a field recorder um, to record ambient sounds that I can use on my drum videos. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do too, I just may as well mention it to you here. I have this external recorder, it's a Comica, um, and I'm gonna be doing a review on that really soon um, on the iPhone, works on a new iPhone. So let's jump in and have a look at the audio. All right, so we're gonna do an audio test. Um, I've set up both of these phones facing each other, and you can see that the mics are both pointing out on both of them. So neither of the mics are pointing directly at my mouth, but you can hear the difference. And over here, we've got the 10s and over here we've got the 10 so you can hear what voice sounds like i'll sit back a little bit there we go and uh let's see how the audio is Okay, so first of all, I need to apologize for my piano playing. I've never had a lesson in my life. I'm completely self-taught. I just took what I know from the guitar and figured out how the chords should go on a piano. So my fingering is wrong. Real pianists are cringing. There's no need to add any hateful comments. Yes, I know. I don't know how to play the piano properly. All right, so moving on. The audio, um, you can hear a significant difference in the audio, in the voice. Maybe this is going to be nice for FaceTime calls, are going to be clearer. Um, but also, you know, you can use this for recording notes. Um, you can use it for little sound bites, different things like that. I'm definitely going to be using the audio. One of the things, though, that I find a little bit annoying, and maybe you noticed it at the very beginning of the clip, it has AGC, which is automatic gain control. It's one of those things that you usually turn off when you're shooting professional video because what it does is it samples the audio and then drops it. The good thing about that is you don't get any clipping, meaning that the audio levels won't go too high. It pads them because what it does is it samples the initial sound, it hears that and immediately sets the volume for the rest of the clip. Problem with that, your first word is going to be a lot louder, your first chord is going to be a lot louder than the rest. So my suggestion if you're using this, just do a test one, two, three, and then start talking and let the AGC kind of dial it in. I'm also curious if there's gonna be some apps or some settings in there. Maybe it's already there. If it is, let me know in the comments underneath if this is something that you can turn off because I would rather use manual recording levels for that very reason. I don't get this loud kind of boom and then it drops down um, significantly. Um, so overall, that's the new iPhone compared to the old iPhone, which is 
kind of the new iPhone too. Um, but of course, because this is an S and it's always been that way with Apple, they release the phone, which has the number, then they add the S, which has an incremental update. So of course, around about next September, they'll be introducing the 11, maybe they're gonna call it. Um, by the way, officially it's not pronounced X, it's pronounced 10. And that's the same way it's been on OS. You know, it was OS 10, it was never OS X. Not that it really matters at all. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button into dust. And if you haven't subscribed yet to Photoshop Cafe, hit that subscribe button right now and you'll get new Photoshop Lightroom tutorials and some photography video gadget things as well every single week from me. Um, don't forget to hit that little uh, bell there so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So anyway, drop a comment. Let me know. What do you guys think? Am I an idiot for buying this phone? Um, or, you know... Personally, I wouldn't have if it hadn't been for the camera upgrade, uh, but I really, you know, I use this a lot for photography, so I'm excited about the new camera. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.